yeah, our next guest speaker to round off this afternoon is Prem Elawalia. She's actually a criminal barrister, not a solicitor. I don't actually know the difference. But um, she's from Christian Khan and is going to talk to us about protesting campus. Thank you. So Thank Thank you. you. I'm not actually used to using a microphone, so apologies if I start shouting down it. Um, first of all, can I just say how grateful I am for the invitation to speak at such an event. It's hugely and fundamentally important, the issues that you've raised today, not simply in the context of whatever your own personal and organisational beliefs are, but the reason being, there are two main themes that have come across today. One is in terms of freedom of expression. So one of the principles within the Human Rights Act. And the second issue is that of accountability. And in this case, it's accountability of the monarchy. But I just wanted to sort of detail to you why, in terms of your organisation and the principles, it's actually so important in terms of society in general and what's happening in terms of protest and policing law at the moment. Um, just to go through, this is actually Lord Hope in a case on Kettling, Austin. Um, and he outlined, one of the features of a vigorous and healthy democracy is that people are allowed to go out onto the streets and demonstrate. And that is exactly the principles that everyone seems to be speaking about this afternoon. And one of the, the concerns, certainly from Christian Khan, because we, we've always been at the forefront in terms of human rights cases, and my area, despite being criminal defence, um, in terms of actions against the police, one aspect that is incredibly worrying and, and has, um, I believe, impacted upon individuals within this organisation is that of preemptive arrests used by the police. And um, certainly one instance, um, that there are certain powers, everybody knows, that the police have to stop and search. And just to detail through one particular example that um, our, our firm has been working on at the moment, the powers in terms of stopping an indiv individual, one of them comes from what's called Section 60 of the Criminal Justice and Public Order Act. Just to go through what that's about, in actual fact, is to say it, it was meant to be for areas like football grounds, to deal with hooliganism, and to deal with a specified area, and if there are reasonable grounds, um, that serious violence is going to start. That's the whole aim, the ethos, and the specific legislation. And instead, in one particular instance, on the 29th of April this year, what it was used actually for, completely against common sense, completely against the legislation, um, was for an individual who was stopped at Victoria Station with a banner that said, democracy, not monarchy, and equality, not monarchy. Now those slogans are not anything whatsoever to do with serious violence. And um, on searching that individual, nothing was found. They were arrested for anticipated breach of the peace and detained for six hours until after the royal wedding. Now, in terms of what um, certainly our firm and, and hopefully others within you know, the human rights area are trying to do, is to advance arguments and show this is completely contradictory. And the reason why it's so important as an organisation um, is because you all come across as extremely intelligent um, individuals from good backgrounds. Most of the people subject to policing in this country don't have those opportunities. They are either suffering from drug addictions or from ethnic minority backgrounds or simply are unable to voice their concerns. Now, if the police are carrying out such powers um, wrongly, in terms of individuals that can protect themselves, it's questionable what they are doing for the rest of the population. And in terms of that particular case, the individual that was stopped, um, the arguments that Christian Khan are using are actually to do with the Equality Act. And I just want to go through a little bit of law about that, just because why it's so important. Because it's not simply on the basis of someone's race, ethnicity or religion that they should be protected but also about their beliefs. And this is really where your organisation comes to the forefront, because a belief in a democratic alternative meant that that individual was arrested, and otherwise they would not have been. 
and that is in breach of the Equality Act. And I think it's hugely important um, to keep in mind that it, it's not simply your organisation that, uh, you know, may well be targeted in terms of future events, but also other protest organisations. And what's important is that policing powers should be looked at and that they should abide by their very own regulations. And I just wanted to turn on to, because I, I know it's briefly been mentioned about other organisations like UK Uncut, and also possibly student protests as well. And certainly in terms of one case which I've been insisting on. Um, in terms of student protest issues, you have individuals such as Alfie Meadows, who is now being prosecuted after having been struck at a protest about tuition fees back in December 2010. And what we're tending to find now is that there, there is the sort of advent of criminalisation of protests. And going back to that whole ethos of freedom of expression, being able to hold individuals accountable, um, that should not be denied. And um, in particular, what, what I would stress in terms of sort of the advents of law, what have you, is that we, we're tending to find, is that with protest cases, unlike if someone's coming out of a nightclub and starts a fight with a police officer, the charging standards for individuals on protest cases it is being much more harsh. So they're being charged with matters such as violent disorder, top heavy, instead of very minor matters which someone tumbling out of a nightclub drunk might well be um, prosecuted upon. Um, I just wanted to also deal with issues such as um, DNA and the keeping of DNA because again th this is very linked into protest type cases and what, we're what we are seeing um, is that the courts are siding with individuals. Um, there are certain cases, for example, the Supreme Court only last month is talking about the police policy of DNA retention for people who are arrested and then either um, simply um, not prosecuted or who are acquitted, that that is unlawful and incompatible with their human rights. So what I'm trying to stress today is that although as an organisational movement you may well think, oh, we're only advocating one aspect, um, I just wanted to stress that it's so hugely important because it's affecting all other areas of protest, protesters and the law in general. Um, and in terms of the only other features I wanted to sort of cover were stop and search rights. And certainly, um, you can have a look at various websites, and I will pass on the details. But it may well be worth, in terms of an advance of the Jubilee um, type matters that you seek to organise, that individuals should know on what basis can I be stopped by a police officer and searched as well. Um, so that, if, for example, they must explain why you're being stopped. Um, in terms of details that the officers have to give you, the name and station where they actually work, the law under which you've been stopped, your rights and why you've been stopped, what basis. Um, and I simply wanted to stress that because uh, that is a matter which um, members should uh, fully be aware of. But last of all, I just wanted to finally cover that, um, the initial um, Part that I was speaking about, that really in terms of an organisation you have a much larger impact in terms of an individual's general rights for freedom of protest and expression and also in terms of the police that they should be abiding by their own codes of practice and not breaching those. Um, and certainly I don't know whether as an organisation you would be interested in terms of receiving legal bulletins on stop and search and also in terms of how protest law um, it is going at the moment and, and we'd be very happy to provide that. But also it's in terms of there are organisations such as Defend the Right to Protest, um, which I, I can pass on the contact details for, that are, are trying to ensure a sort of umbrella network. So organisations such as yours do have access to um, legal teams just so that you can check, look, what are the general 
um, laws here in terms of stop and search so that individuals before they go out are protected. Because as I do say, it's, it's an extremely worrying trend that it, it's not simply one class of individuals. And um, I just want to speak very quickly because the, the very codes of conduct in terms of searching individuals came about because of Brixton riots. Um, and in terms of what's happening currently, be it tuition fees, be it the Movement Republic, um, or, or UK Uncut, is that we're, we're now coming a full circle, and we've got to ensure that those rights as enshrined, in, be it Human Rights Act, or be it in terms of PACE codes, mean that past policing mistakes are not repeated, and individuals can continue to express within the law, this is the point, within the law, um, their, their right of freedom of expression and also to know their rights and not to be discriminated against simply because they hold certain philosophical views and that um, people are encouraged to have a healthy um, and fully equal discussion.